autumn in Pennsylvania has arrived with the knowledge the presidential election is just days away. In this, one of three crucial swing states, every vote could make a difference in deciding the presidency. In historic County York, home to the nation's first capital, more than 200,000 voters will choose whether or not to cast a ballot. Voting is voluntary. We're looking at a lever voting machine. It's the kind that's been used in York County for over 50 years to record our votes here, both in federal, state and local elections. Every county in each of the 50 states is allowed to choose its own form of voting. We don't change things easily unless there's a need to change them. And this machine has worked very well in your county for 50 years now. Now, as in 2000, voters are confronted by a patchwork of systems with too little funding and too few trained poll workers. The vote is cast by leaving the levers down and remembering that the curtain's closed so that anyone outside can't see it. And when you turned the red lever back over to the left, those levers moved up and then the curtain would have opened after the levers are up and your vote is cast. The only thing that everyone agrees upon is that no one agrees on what the proper solution is. Americans squirm at the memory of the 2000 election and those pesky hanging chads, the paper ballots not clearly punched through. Al Gore will never be my president! Never! Outrage at the election chaos turned into a resolve to transform the electoral system. This is the day that the United States died! The federal government, after the 2000 election, embarked on a two-year debate on election reform. And at the end of that debate, Congress enacted and the president signed the Help America Vote Act of 2002. That act represents a bargain between the federal government and state and local election officials. The federal government, for its part, committed to deliver roughly $4 billion over three years to state and local election officials. What Americans will see around the country when they return to the polls will vary from place to place. Doug Chapin is director of electionline.org, a nonpartisan election reform analysis group. In his view, the federal government hasn't fulfilled its end of the bargain. Only about half the money allocated has reached the states. I think election reform got lost in the shuffle. I think once Congress enacted the bill, it considered itself done with the issue for the time being and knew that it had been controversial. And I think there was, to a certain extent, a lack of follow-through. I haven't seen any evidence that that was partisan uh, in motivation or that there was any sort of ill intent. I just think the issue got lost in the crush of larger events like September 11th, the war in Iraq uh, and others. The battle between President George W. Bush and challenger Senator John Kerry is looking just as tight as the 2000 race. Maybe that didn't take either. <laughs> Both campaigns have mobilised their base, sending a massive influx of new voters to registration offices like that in York. I understand they have to be here by 5 o'clock, October 29th. OK, thank you. Here's that paper you asked me to fill out. I want this. Oh. Trash. I want that. We've processed 20, uh, a little over 20,000 new voter registration applications, not including duplicates and changes and things, just new ones. And since the end of August, we've turned out almost 10,000 absentee ballot applications. In a normal election, we'd be turning out anywhere from 500 to 1,000 absentees, usually closer to 500. In the nearby county of Lehigh, they've been swamped by absentee ballots. Elsewhere in Columbus, Ohio, officials are working around the clock, six days a week, processing new voters. Some may not be registered in time to be allowed to vote. We are on the brink of this historic opportunity to, to have so many people more engaged in our democratic process this year than we've ever seen. And yet we're going we're gonna to show them that the first experience they get at trying to vote is they're turned away. Five states, including Florida, are allowing early voting in a bid to ease the load on November 2nd. But when voters in Broward County turned out to use Florida's new electronic voting machines, they found computer glitches. The problem here is that there is a problem with the connection with the mainframe computer. This is hurry up and wait. Both parties deny any wrongdoing, but, as in the past... Republicans accuse Democrats of trying to stuff the ballot boxes, while Democrats accuse Republicans of trying to stop their voters getting to the polls. 
Both campaigns plan to have teams of lawyers and observers on hand to stop any electoral shenanigans. We could have hundreds of thousands of observers, poll watchers, lawyers, law students, uh, people across the, the, uh, the spectrum who will be watching the process. Many of those people will be willing to challenge the process if a problem occurs. For that reason, I think um, the vast number of people who are helping to prevent another Florida or hoping to prevent another Florida may actually help to make it occur. There have been changes to the voting system that will cause fewer voters to be turned away at the polls this time. But a combination of new technology with a big voter turnout and confusion at the ballot box means it's impossible to rule out another Florida.